Hi. Today, we're talking about white balance and the importance of white balance and how it pertains to what we do. Tony, what is white balance? <laughs> oh, is, is that all you're asking? Okay. <laughs> so my understanding, layperson's understanding of white balance, I, you know, I start thinking about uh, the human eye and what an absolute marvel of engineering it is that, uh, uh, you know, we can come into a, a small room that may have two or three different types of light bulbs and we have a big bright window and we have all these colors coming into the room, color cast coming into the room and our eye is so advanced that it could cut through all of that and see white where white is supposed to be. Like in this photo here, the, the, uh, the barn door or the ceiling. So white balance for me as a layperson is um, how do we render an image and make things appear white that our eye would naturally see as white. So that's my understanding of white balance, Wayne. Okay, I can live with that. Let me show you how a simple technique that I use to take out color casts. Okay. And the thing about color casts is there is a, normally there's a, a couple of light sources and there is a kind of a, a light source that is conflicting with another light source, which causes a color cast. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to eliminate the color cast. But one of the things with white is um, white is the, is all three colors combining to make white. And what happens, we don't wanna start taking all the color out of white because that doesn't make it white, that just makes it gray, which is um, a, a luminance value. And you, we, we light, white has this life and this color and texture to it that we can't, that we really shouldn't take out. Yeah, and, if, and certainly if you take too much of the color out, our, our photos will look very sterile. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is done late in the afternoon and off to the left, there is a large window and up above there is, uh, you know, just normal lights, but the, those lights are casting a yellowish orange uh, throughout the scene. Mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is we're going to take out the yellow and orange out of the scene. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take the saturation and we're going to boost it up. And what happens is the, the way it was before, if we, if we look here in this thing, um, we would normally select a, a white area and there's really not a lot of separation between the white paint and the yellow. So what we wanna do is we wanna make, make it so it only takes out the yellow and kind of leaves a little bit of the white there. Yeah. So we're gonna ultra saturate it we're going to go to the color mixer and we're going to take the we're going to take the color selection tool and we're going to kind of pick this is the light this is where it affects it so we're simply going to just come down a little bit a little now we bit. don't okay. we don't we don't want to go all the way because and see what happens is if we do yes it's white but if you look at the floor and everything it's all screwed up because we've yeah. we're working on an ultra saturated thing so yes. we're going to go here we're gonna go just a little bit, just a touch. Okay. And then we're gonna to go to, we're gonna come back to saturation and voila. Yeah, we have taken out, we have taken out a lot of the um, yellow pollution that is in the, uh, in the whites and we've kept the luminance values of where the lights are hitting the walls. And from here, we have a lot to work with. Um, yeah to that to me so something like this we can we have stuff to play around with yeah awesome so that's that's one of the ways that that you take care of color cast yes can i show you my way absolutely okay so uh here let me share my screen and okay and let's go wide here. There we are. 
So here we have uh, a scene that probably would be typical for a lot of folks in real estate photography, where we walk in, uh, our clients want us to shoot with lights on. Um, and yet here, let me close this off here. Uh, and yet uh, we have sort of like the blues and the cyans that are so uh, um, prevalent in daylight coming in and, and uh, you know, affecting the color on this wall. And then we have all around the scene, the rest of the scene, we have colors that are affected by the, these, you know, these strong lights um, in the shot. So the question is, how do we kind of balance this? Because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to work through the color so that it appears appropriate, so that it appears like, you know, the way our eye would see it when we're there. Okay. Does that make sense, Wayne? Yeah. And I like the word appropriate because what happens is if you would have taken the, the eyedropper and just selected and made it gray, well, what happens is those tiles aren't gray in these, yeah. in this situation. So, yeah. and, and also what happens is if you took it to the left and right, those tones are different. So um, it would be really hard to uh, balance it out if you use the eyedropper to get where the color is. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, here's a technique that I've, I, I've developed. I haven't seen this any place. I've developed it uh, sort of like a homegrown thing. And um, it was based on my confusion when I started out in Photoshop where in every online tutorial that I saw, in every uh, Photoshop course that I saw uh, uh, or that I took on white balance, everybody was talking about finding something in the scene that's neutral that I could click my eyedropper <laughs> on. And that really confused the heck out of me because neutral to me and the way I see things uh, feels so subjective. Mm -hmm. So I thought, is there... A, a color that's really consistent throughout most of our photos. And when I looked around most of the photos, the color that was most consistent was right here in the switch plate or the outlet plate, the white there. So I take my eyedropper tool and I click on that because that's my reference point. And I click on at least a couple of them. And for each click, I ask myself, do I prefer my this color cast, my as shot? And then I click on here, the, this light switch on the left. And I look at this and I think, you know, this is too cool. Uh, given the choice between the original one and this one, I prefer the original, okay? Then I go to the next one and I say, do I prefer this or do I prefer when I click on this outlet plate? And I think, yeah, I can live with this one. And I, you know, I prefer this one. So I say to myself, okay, let's go to auto. So I jot down these numbers before I go to auto. So this is what, uh, Wayne, I can't see this. What is that? 3450 and minus five. Mm -hmm. Okay. I go to, and I jot those numbers down and then I go to auto and we see 4,200 and zero. And what my approach is, is that I split the difference. So to make the math easy, our previous number was 3450. Let's make the math easy. Let's say 3400. The difference between 3400 and 4200 is 800. And I just split that in half because that's splitting the difference. So here we have our upper number 4200. We subtract 400 because that's splitting the difference and that gives us 3,800. Uh, as for the tint, we had minus five and here we have zero. So I split the difference and that's about minus two. And there you have it. I like that's, it. That's my homegrown technique. And, uh, and the point to remember here is that just because we have um, appropriate or effective white balance. And by the way, this specific technique, to my eye anyway, gets me great white balance eight or nine times out of 10. And when it doesn't, I'm, I'm in the ballpark that I can just fiddle with these sliders and get it to where I want it to be. So the point that I wanna make here is just because we have um, 
better or appropriate white balance doesn't mean that the whites have to be absolutely perfectly white, because if they were, that would make the scene look awkward because they shouldn't be white. You know, we have daylight coming in. We have the nice warm tones from um, these uh, pendant lights hitting uh, much of the scene. We have to have some of that warmth in the scene. If this were pure white, it would look ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. Go to the bottom. Go to your next, go to the next one. The next one? This yeah. one here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so let's, so do your thing and then let's combine what you do and what I do and see what this looks like. Yeah, so here I, I wanted to show this one, Wayne, because in the previous shot where we had conflicts with multiple light source, we had our mother nature light coming in was one. And then we had our, that warm light coming from the pendants was another. Well, in this scene, we don't have, there's only one light source. There's only light coming from outside. And yet we still have a pretty significant yellow green sort of color cast, you know, with all the light bouncing around off of those leaves I'd imagine gets us this color cast. Mm -hmm. So in using my approach, I am finding um, outlet plates or switch plates. And let's see which one I prefer. Uh, do I prefer the original or this one here? Uh, in the interest of time, let's go with this one here. Okay, so now our numbers are, what's our numbers? Uh, 4,600 and plus 24. So now let's go to auto. And what do we have here? We have 4,800. So the difference is 200. We split the difference is one, 100. So this becomes 4,700. Uh, before our tint was 24, now it's 27. And let's split the difference, let's call it 25. And there you have it. There we have really, really nice white balance. And also when we talk about white, if you look at the, the, the cabinets next to the window. Right uh, here? Yeah, they aren't blown out. We still have that nice, you, there's still texture there. And you know, we actually see that these are cabinets. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we have, we have a, it's a little bit cooler here because it, it's getting hit by the direct daylight coming in right. and that's fine. And as we go into the room, uh, it's almost as if a color gradient here we, where we go from cooler to a little bit warmer and you know something, that's natural. That's pretty much okay. So, okay, so do the saturation at 100%. Okay, so let's do your thing here. Let's go to saturation right there. Yeah. Let's go to color mixer mm -hmm. and you want me to get the selector tool. And where do you want me to go? Right about here? Right about there. Just click okay. and just drag it over a little bit. Click and, and drag it over a little bit. Mm -hmm. And just now you want me to go back to saturation mm -hmm. and get me to zero. And we have a much cleaner side. Yeah. So that side of it where we originally had that sort of yellow green is now kind of a, a similar warmer tone to the cabinetry on the on the left. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and so what happens is the color down at the bottom is um, the light coming in from the window hitting the, the counter is giving a white cast on under the sink and the light coming in that's continuing through that bottom, that those bottom areas is the reflection from the floor, which right. is natural. So, so it's perfectly natural. It's yeah. perfectly natural and it keeps contact, it keeps in line with the way that the light and the colors are falling in the room. Yeah. So that's about it. I, I hope uh, you've uh, enjoyed our, our, our various techniques to get um, more appropriate white balance. Uh, if you have any questions, um, email us. Wayne will put the, our email addresses uh, at the bottom of the screen. Uh, at the end of the video. And if you have a, a photo that you'd like critiqued or a topic that you'd like us to cover, uh, please drop us a note and uh, we'll get to it. Uh, we hope you'll uh, continue joining us on these videos and we hope that you're enjoying them. And we hope you're learning something. <laughs> yeah, most importantly. Yeah, I'm mean, having a really good time doing this. And, you know, the, the, as, as we keep doing these, the subjects that I think that we're covering are starting to become more and more 
obscure, but <laughs> <laughs> but really, more I think difficult. Yeah, you know, more difficult. But I, yeah, th th these are these are great. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for joining us, Wayne. Thank you, and uh, we'll talk next time. Thank you very much. Bye now. Bye.